which is an LED. And that diode. goes to this negative rail. So when this side turns on, what, what happens is that these, you'll see here, that these do a conduction because it's negative. So this side's 10, this side's 5. So then we do the same thing with this one. And when they, these, these are flipping backwards and forwards, in other words, just keep in your mind that, that what's happening is this becomes an alternating circuit, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And we take energy from the circuit, we take it from these points, right here and it'll be in the difference of potential there'll be a difference between the two minus the charge voltage so that will be the negative energy that you can have in the system and that's depicted as this switches back and forth the potential energy that's left over is right here in this yellow LED and of course the faster the circuit goes the steadier the potential energy is between the switch points. So, what I want to also want to mention is that uh, <clears throat> you only need to run this for a little while because you don't, you, you want to be able to use the energy. So if you lose, use a little bit of energy from say this battery and use a little bit of energy from this battery and a little bit of energy from this battery but running something right the batteries are going to lower themselves down and all you have to do is put this in the charge mode and charge the batteries back up and so it'll switch back and forth like you see right here you'll be able to use this energy if you want to run the switch but you want to pay very close attention because you don't want the NICATs to overcharge and get hot. That's very important. And you want the correct wires in gauge, 10 gauge or 5 gauge or 3 gauge or whatever you're going to do, or 20 gauge. Uh, you want, you got to have, uh, this wire diameter is very important because you want to keep the impedance low to these batteries because they are a low impedance device. And you start out with an initial charge. You so, know, hold on, John. You said the wire size is very important. It is. Um, depending on what they're going to run. Okay. So, so what, do you, what do you recommend they run to start out with? Well, I'm, gonna, I'm recommending that I'm starting off here with 18 gauge. Or this is 20 gauge. Okay. Okay. It's 20 gauge because we're not looking for a lot of power, but if they were using batteries, it'd be OT6. And I'll explain that in a minute. Okay. I'll get to that. So, it's very important to remember that the wires that you're using can, can carry the currents that you want to switch between each side. And once again, there is no resistance in here at all on these LEDs. There's no resistors at all, so that, that's just the energy that it's switching back and forth. And remember that every time it does this and turns the LEDs on, it's using energy in this portion of the circuit. And the Tesla switch was kind of funny because you can't explain why the batteries stay charged, even though it's using this potential energy in the circuit and uh, w once again to show you that it's alternating because I, 
I want to cover this so everybody understands that it has to be switched this way. You cannot switch it any other way. Uh, and and it, even in the advancements of this circuit, which are proprietary and protected under our patent number on the potential charger, which is U.S. Patent 6677730, this is why we don't go into the advanced circuits. We just go into the the uh, the simple circuits, but. We'll show you this again, that they're alternating. Okay. And we'll show you the switching one more time here. And if we look at the batteries, they're over 5 volts. In fact, they're up a little bit. Okay, now you can see that this one's coming down. And that's what they do. They go back and forth and they alternate. And the, and the funny thing about a NICAD battery is, is if you leave the circuit overnight, NICADs lose a little bit of energy because there's leakages in all batteries. So you have to understand that too. That once you perfect the switch to do exactly what you want to do, you can maintain a low charge mode where you can keep it running. And so for those that that have to have the energy to recharge a battery to run the oscillator, then you have to come off uh, a portion of this switch. You have to come off somewhere here. And you have to isolate the oscillator. So your battery is going to be here and it won't be tied to the ground of the oscillator but only you have to isolate the charge. So you're going to have to put another switching transistor in here to direct the charge when this turns on to this battery and then when that's off the oscillator gets the energy, so you can do it, and uh, we can't go into that portion because it would take way too long to do that, but I think right now what you want to do is you want to run, you can always put a switch and, and switch two batteries here because when you're dealing in the circuit here, you're not dealing with any negative energy. You're dealing with positive energy, and that positive energy can bring this. These could be two batteries here, and one battery here, and two here, and one back down here, or it could be two here and one here. Um, and then you can you can have a switch that which runs the oscillator, so that when this battery is depleted, it switches it out of the circuit and charges it up across one of these again. And you can do that in a loop, providing that you don't try to do it with the negative end, because you're not you're not going to be able to mix the two energies. There's a difference in the energy. And I'm going to say right now, don't try to clip lead this circuit. If you try to do this with clip leads, you're going to fail at everything you do. I did that and my wires burned out. Who did it? I did that when I tried to do a 12 volt clip leads. And what happened? Well, they were the wire gauge was too small too. Right, and what will happen is if these batteries start to get bigger, um, energy circuits. So excuse me. Instead of clip leads, what should one use? Well, it should be on a circuit board, or it should be on a, a breadboard that's got some pretty stiff wire on it, because you're going to lose a lot here. Solid connections. Right, solid connections, pinpoint connections. Uh, so we don't want to see a clip lead. Uh, running from this collector to the plus of this battery and a clip lead running from this. You can do this if you want and fail at what you're doing. Or you can do it the correct way and build the circuit like I'm telling you to. Okay? And don't make... Here's the next thing with the Tesla switch. 
do not make any changes because you think it's better. Because you're wrong. It's not better. You get the circuit to run exactly the way that I have drawn it on the, on the board. And once you get that running, then you're free as a person to make all the foolish changes you want. And that's just how I have to say that because I, I have people call me all the time and say, well, John, I want to be able to use this. Well, no, build the circuit the way that I've shown you how to build the circuit. And then after you get it to operate exactly like it's operating right here, you can make all the changes that you want. So don't think you know anything about this circuit because for the past 25 years you've done nothing with the circuit. Nobody's built this circuit. It just died out there and you're all asking, well, we would like to know how to make this and I'm telling you, here it is. This is the way you make this circuit. You don't change anything until it's operating. Okay, so anyway, um, what I want to get you to understand and I'm going to point this out again to you, that when this is going back and forth in a switch, this is AC here. It's not rectified. You cannot run anything except a light bulb here. You can't run your DC circuits with this until it's rectified and filtered out. And what it's going to, going to look like to the... Uh, to the uh, rectifier is probably a spike, a switching spike. So you need to transform the negative to a positive energy to run something. That's what I was doing with this radio when I had it hooked up here. I was letting you listen to the switching while it was running the radio. Because I wanted to make certain that you understood the energy that was running the radio. So I wanted you to hear it. So, everybody's going to say, well, how can we run the oscillator um, off this device with, that, with its own internal battery? 